Hello guys, welcome back to Rise Tales, The Last Adventurers. This is the 20th story. This is the Einstein Interception. This is in Wichita, or Kansas, 1978 this is. So, um, yeah. A delivery man called Roland Coppin gets a mysterious uh, summons to his boss's office. He wants to help get a package, suspicious package, that um, is quite unreal to them also to him as well and he wants him, wants him to, to deliver it to somewhere to an on, 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 to a location that people don't really know at all really and he goes there gets the package and once he's in his car he finds out that it's Einstein's brain in a jar of cider and he starts hearing a voice in his head then which is telling him to keep it and keep it as a prized possession. Keep it as always, keep it as everything there. And it's like, he sort of agrees to it, like he's, he sort of reluctantly agrees to it. But also, if anyone tries to steal from it, steal from him, or anything else, or get in his way, kill them. So in doing so, he carries a, carries a handgun with him, and ends up going on a shooting spree. In order to take Einstein's brain, out of, his, out of his hands, you know, like keeping his hands without no one pinching it or anything like that. The dinosaurs sort of get a whole wind of this, of course. Of course, they always get wind of some strange stuff going on at this, you know, usually. And they find out that they're looking, looking for a newspaper from a man who's taking Einstein's brain. And of course, they sort of go, you know, he, you know, sort of assist the chief of police. And I think as he looks at them, they think, what, why? You know, you think, but a bit awkward, and you sort of interest in the case or something like that. It's just like they sort, of, they sort of bull the way, they sort of like just black their way in, really, to say, you know, we can, we know this person, we know his motivations, everything else, which they don't actually. So they sort of lie into get into like get into see the person whatsoever, and end up, you know, going to a case that they're not familiar with at all, not even familiar with, you know, the recovery of the brain and everything else, all that, these heavily armed and everything else. So he leads a little chase, to chase around the city, very much, and obviously Roland has to come to the ter has to come to, come to terms, very much like, is he, does he want to leave this life, of course, or leave, because he's, he has a family, he does, he has a wife and couple of kids, well, American wife and a couple of kids, because he's British, he's an American citizen, he's a British American citizen, well, a British, a British person living in England, in, in America, and, you know, ha has to decide on that, but it leads to a conclusion as well, like, do we hand the brain over to him, or does he live the life and carry on? You know, in his head, well, the thing with him is, he has a split personality, he does, and the voice inside his head is, is like his subconscious, really, and it's it's telling him, to, it's getting all the negative, bad vibes out of him, and it's like, he's the one that's controlling, you know, his subconscious is really much controlling Roland ever since he was a kid, everything else, it's just like, you know, it's never unclear if it's manifestations of mental health or whatever, it's never, it's not too clear, really. In that regard, you know, unless something's crawling to his ear, he's just talking to him, or something like that, you know, it's never really specifically mentioned, uh, it's all mentioned really in the book, well, in the story, really, in the book and the story, or in the, in the draft of it. But in, but in doing so, he sort of goes against his will, just, you know, go back to his family and everything else, and actually says no. But ends up shooting him in the head, ends up shooting himself in the head. You know, while he's got the brain, of course, he puts the gun to his head and puts a bullet in his head, of course, aiming to kill his subconscious, really. Like, and he's, you know, he sort of tricks the subconscious in a way, but also just ends up committing suicide, you know, rather than let the rather than be handed to the police or let down, lay his family down. Well, so far as lay his family down anyway, you know, but rather than go back to his family for the pain and grief and everything else and what so many people he shot, he basically puts a bullet in his head and that's it, you know. And the, the brain is preserved, and also um, um, history carries on. And that's it, really, with the Einstein section. It sort of ends on a bit of a down note, doesn't it? Um, 
so yeah, so this is not one of the stories I've I've uh, re uh, written as a fan story, really. Just came about with a photo, sort of like, like Liberation Day, Crucifixion Squad, they sort of came out of that batch, really. I was interested to see, I don't know what in inspired me to do this, but I think I was looking at some uh, bits and pieces, like interesting bits of history, or, or what was it, that, like Mysteries of the 20th Century, I think Einstein's brain came up, really, the discovery of Albert Einstein's brain. And I thought, that'd be an interesting idea, really, just to hack into that, so I think no one's really had tapped at that before. And I thought, you know, why don't someone who steals it and just, you know, that sort of thing. But instead I chose for like a, a normal man who's basically just like mentally just gone, really, and decided to you know, just keep it for himself, really. And goes on a killing spree, of course. Roland Cobb in, in particular is based on Phil Collins. More specifically, more... In, so it's 1778, so it's more the late 70s Phil Collins, really. So this is like, and then we're a free era, Genesis era. Phil Collins, if you look in there. Picture that now. Here's a picture of Phil Collins in 1978. This is the same same look. Really, I always thought about that because I thought, well, t in terms, Phil Collins as a villain, it's pretty interesting because he's he's sort of targeted these, you know, targeted like in as sort of like the you know as a man man who ruined Genesis or something, you know, makes dreary pop songs and ballads and everything else about love life and everything else, like it's tedious and everything, you know, and he's kind of a bit, you know, being a tax exile and everything else, which the Gallagher brothers of Oasis sort of. Um, sort of took the piss out, really, and I think he sort of acknowledged that in Room 101 with uh, Paul Merton, I think, and yeah, I thought, you know, and, I, and also he appeared in a few films like Buster, I, I, which I covered on the channel, um, what's the other film, Balto was another one I, I think he appeared in, Balto, he's, been a, he's just appeared in a few films, really, um, I forgot the other ones, I did music for a few Disney films as well. But for, as an idea, have Phil Collins as the main villain, that'll be real interesting. And there you go. That's Einstein intersection, really. Um, so yeah, that's all I can say. Nothing else to add to it, really. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. As always, see you for the next video, and goodbye.